This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Friday, October 19th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Last night at 7 o'clock at Maryland Hall, County Executive Steve Hsu and challenger Stuart Pittman squared off in a Capitol-sponsored debate. For the first half of the debate, the questions were derived from the newsroom itself, and during the second half, they were from emailed-in questions solicited by the Capitol. Topics were predictable, development, teacher and public safety salaries. Pittman hit hard on overdevelopment within the county, while Shu touted his record of fiscal responsibility. The Capitol will have a video of the debate up sometime later today, but if you wanted to listen to it, we did get an audio recording, and you can check out our Facebook page, All Annapolis, or our Twitter feed, at Eye on Annapolis, for a link there as well. Good news for the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay Trust and the Maryland Department of Transportation Motor Vehicle Administration unveiled their new Bay Plate design yesterday afternoon at Sandy Point State Park. And it is a gorgeous design. It features the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, a blue crab, clear blue waters, bay grass, and a bright blue sky. Now, the old plate was in use for 14 years, and that was designed by Joe Barson of Citizen Pride. And the Bay Trust decided they wanted to freshen it up a little bit for a couple of different reasons. That The technology and license plate manufacturing has changed, and they can do full-color printing on license plates now where they couldn't 14 years ago. So it's a much more vibrant print than we've had before. And also, when former Governor Martin O'Malley instituted the War of 1812 plate, which was resoundingly hated by pretty much everybody, the sales of the Bay Plate picked up. Everybody wanted the pretty blue plate. When Governor Hogan introduced the fairly cool Maryland flag plate, a lot of people were content with that as the standard Maryland plate, and the sales for the Bay Plate dropped a little bit. Over the last 14 years, the old plate had 330 38,000 plates on the road. And that plate is responsible for millions and millions of dollars given to the Chesapeake Bay Trust to help improve the bay. Now, if you want to see what it looks like, head on over to ionanapolis.net. We do have some photographs from the unveiling. And if you want to get one for your car, you're going to have to wait a little bit. They will be available at MVAs, licensed and titling places, and online, the Chesapeake Bay Trust, which is cbtrust.org, on Monday, October 29th. In more Good Bay news, one of the Chesapeake Bay's most beloved inhabitants is doing well. Apparently, the striped bass or rockfish have been having lots of sex, and they are reproducing at an average to above average rate in the bay. That's according to a latest annual survey done over the summer in Maryland and Virginia waters. Now, the bay is the biggest rockfish nursery on the Atlantic coast, and the species is a favorite with fishermen, as well as people that like to eat seafood, of which I don't include myself. The number of rockfish in the bay took a steep drop in the 70s and the 80s, but conservation efforts, including year-long fishing bans, helped them bounce back. So that's good news there. And as long as we're talking about the Bay, let's talk about the West and Road River and the South River. As you know, they have two separate Riverkeeper organizations, the South River Federation and the West slash Road Riverkeeper. And the two organizations announced yesterday morning that they are merging. They are now going to be called the Arundel Rivers Federation. I'm not quite sure why they wouldn't have gone with three rivers or two rivers, but that was their choice. And pending an approval from their memberships later this month, that will go through and we will have one Riverkeeper organization for those three rivers called the Arundel Rivers Federation. They do plan to keep both river keepers employed. They share common goals and they can consolidate and save some money and do be a little bit more efficient by combining services and administration. That is about it for the top news this morning. Please be sure you're checking in to ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day because we never know what's going to happen after we release this. Make sure you're recommending us to your friends and colleagues. And it is Friday, so you want to hang out because we've got our picks of things to do for the weekend. And of course... In just a minute, we have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. 35 years ago, Annapolis became a fine dining destination when Carroll's Creek Cafe first opened its doors on the Eastport waterfront. Today, diners enjoy delicious new American appetizers and entrees from sea and land, an extensive wine and craft beer selection, and creative desserts, all while enjoying the most scenic views in town. Join the fun as Carroll's Creek celebrates with a very special three-course 
$35 anniversary dinner menu from October 15th to the 27th. Call 410-263-8102 to reserve your table today. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and here's your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Friday, October 19th. Yes, it is legitimately cold out there this morning with temps in the 30s for most as high pressure directly overhead calmed winds down after a bit of a couple of breezy days. And in doing so, it let all remaining heat in the skies above Annapolis and all of Anne Arundel County escape from the day before into a clear night sky, allowing temps to drop to levels we haven't seen since late winter or early spring. But today will rebound nicely with more sun and highs upper 50s to maybe even mid 60s in spots. But then another front moves close and brings showers Saturday morning with clouds likely sticking around much of the rest of the day before skies clear for Sunday. But temps will drop back into the 50s with breezy winds once again. And finally, after a summer-like start to the month, October is being October once and for all. Okay, that's it for today. Be sure to download our free weather app on all of your devices by searching the Apple App Store or Google Play Store for DCMD VA weather so you can always stay weather-informed or follow us on our website at dmvweather.com or on Facebook or Twitter. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great weekend out there, especially when the Redskins smash the Cowboys Sunday afternoon in Landover, Maryland. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. It's the Navy Football and Bud Light Golden Ticket Giveaway. Join Ion Annapolis and Navy Football this Saturday from 1230 to 330 for a chance to win VIP Bud Light Golden Tickets to see the Navy Midshipmen take on the Houston Cougars. Four lucky winners will be selected for the ultimate Bud Light football fan experience. Come on out to Heroes Pub on Saturday from 1230 to 330 for the Bud Light Golden Ticket Party. Bring some friends, make some new ones, because it's all about building friendships. Every weekend, there's something exciting going on in the Annapolis area. Be sure to visit iAnnapolis.net to sign up for a newsletter highlighting all the weekend events. Here are our top picks for this weekend. God, it's Yes, it is the weekend, and I always think as we get into winter, we're going to be short of things to do, but that is not the case. So listen up. We're going to go through this fairly quickly because there is a ton of stuff happening here. Tonight at the Eastport Library, which is right there in Hillsmere in the entrance, at 7 p.m., it is going to be a reading and release of Rob Hyassen, the former editor at the Capitol Gazette, his book, Float Plan, which was published posthumously. His widow, Maria Hyassen, is going to be there. She will be reading a passage from the book, as well as former Capitol reporter Tim Prudente. And this was a lifelong project of his. Ah, not really lifelong. It was a 10-year project of his. It finally came to fruition. The Hyassens really loved Eastport, and Eastport is sprinkled throughout the book. It will be available for sale. And if you're any kind of a book person, head on over to the Eastport Library tonight at 7 p.m. If you're not into reading, head on down to City Dock. Hop on the Harbor Queen. It is halfway to St. Paddy's Day cruise featuring Dublin Five, our favorite Irish rockers in town. Tickets are still available on that. You can get them at cruisesonthebay.com. It is a three-hour cruise, and Dublin Five will be there amping up all of the sounds on the Harbor Queen as it goes up and down the Severn River. For the kids, Trunk or Treat, which is a new concept to me, and it's maybe unique to Maryland and supposed to trick or treat, but the Bay Area Community Church in Crownsville is sponsoring this. It is Trunk or Treat with a UFO theme. So if you've got any kind of a costume, if you've got a UFO theme, even better, it is free. Gets underway at 6.30 p.m. And back here in Annapolis at 7.30, it is the Portland Cello Project. This is really cool. I think there's nine cellos. There might be seven. They get together and they are playing Radiohead. This happens at Maryland Hall. It's got a really neat sound. Go YouTube it. Find Portland Cello Project. Tell me you don't like their music. If you find you do like it, head on over to Maryland Hall. The show gets underway at 730. I do recommend that you get there early to partake in a glass of wine or perhaps a beer and check out some of the fine photography that is there in the galleries right now. 
Saturday and Sunday. It is the last weekend for the Renaissance Festival of the 2018 season. It has sold out for the last three weekends in a row. So if you are planning on going this year, get your tickets online in advance because they probably will sell out. It does look to be a good weather weekend. An Annapolis tradition that was here for many years went away for a few and is back. Nancy Hammond Editions is releasing her annual Chesapeake Bay poster series. That gets underway at 10 a.m. at her store. I don't know what the address is on West Street, but it is right next to the Hilton Garden Inn. Tomorrow afternoon, you've got Navy football taking on the Houston Cougars at 3.30 p.m., and you can follow us at Ion Annapolis on Twitter or All Annapolis or IonAnnapolis.net. We'll have a live blog. We'll be tweeting and everything else from there as well as Navy tries to redeem their season. Finally, Sunday, this is a fun event, Dogtoberfest. We had Oktoberfest. Now we have Dogtoberfest. It's the Dogtoberfest and Homebrew Festival at the Annapolis Maritime Museum. And Dogwood Acres is putting this on. It goes on from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And it is a benefit for the Chesapeake Canine Fund. And what the Chesapeake Canine Fund does is it provides funds to law enforcement in the Chesapeake area so they can outfit their canine officers with bulletproof vests and pretty much whatever they may need to keep the officers, the canine officers, safe, healthy, and protected. As the Eastport Oyster Boys song goes, you know, all you need in Eastport is a good hat, a good dog, and a good boat. Well, you bring your good dog... The Maritime Museum has a good boat. You're on your own for your own good hat. Throw in some beer. It sounds like a perfect way to end the weekend. There is your list. There is an awful lot of things to do. Whatever you do, please do it safely because we want to see you here again next week. And with that, have a great weekend. We will see you here on Monday. Imagine your child saying, guess what I learned in school today? At St. Andrews, it happens every day. We asked teachers why. Our innovative educational approach spans indoors and out with challenging academics that inspire and engage. In our small classes, we are able to find the learner in every child, from preschool to eighth grade. See for yourself as St. Andrews hosts an open house at its Edgewater campus, Friday, November 9th from 9 to 11 a.m. Or call 410-266-0952 today. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.